Previously, on MasterChef Back to Win, come on, man. The cooks had to elevate takeout classics. Spaghetti and meatballs. Empanadas. And with top ten on the line. Who's gonna come down the way? Why? Your ass better cook. Some lifted fast food to fine dining. It's award-winning stuff. That's so clever and smart. I might even take that from you. Congratulations, Derek. But one cook was taken out of the competition. Instead of elevating it, you sunk it. It just doesn't taste good. The individual that's cooked for the very last time is Fred. Tonight, welcome to the top 10. The back to wing cooks are making a pit stop. You have to elevate gas station snacks into gourmet dishes. Wow. That's the secret of any great chef. Elevation, right? It's about to go down. Get it! I melt the gummy bears down, I pour the beer in there. What? That sounds disgusting. I, I want that immunity pin back. It's the biggest risk taken so far in this competition. And while some create snack magic, it's delicious. Couldn't be happier. This is an absolute showstopper. Others will be left behind. Tastes like chocolate scrambled eggs. It's gross. You took a big risk today, and you failed. Mm-hmm. Love this. Here we go. Junk food? Gas station. Oh, like a little snack shop. Oh my goodness. I see all these snacks and different goodies and stuff, and I'm like, oh my goodness. I didn't get this figure for just eating vegetables. So this is gonna be interesting. Welcome to the MasterChef filling station. Yes. Yeah. It's been a long road to get to this point in the competition, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But now, we are at the top 10. Come on, give yourselves a round of applause. Guys, if you want to succeed in the restaurant business, you have to keep up with the trends. Sometimes that means being on the cutting edge, and sometimes it means tapping into nostalgia. In tonight's challenge, all of you are going to do both. All these classic road trip snacks bring back strong memories of childhood, family, and friends. But now, Chefs across the globe are taking these snack foods and using them as ingredients across fine dining cuisine. Tonight, all of you will follow that trend and make these gas station snacks into gourmet dishes. Wow. And in case you're thinking that may be impossible tonight, oh boy. allow me to demonstrate how it could be done. Yes. To cook a gourmet dish with these gas station ingredients is the toughest challenge thus far. So I'm gonna watch every single thing that Gordon is doing, and I'm gonna be conceptualizing my dish. Right, I'm gonna do a beautiful crusted fillet of Dover sole. So let's start off with some salt and vinegar crisps and some pretzels, I think, yeah? Yeah, yeah. smart. So the idea of a crust on a fish is to give the texture. Now. We want a decent crust. Get it too fine, it burns, okay? Really important. Got it. So, there we go. And I haven't gone too powdery, so therefore, you can take quite a nice, beautiful high heat. Okay, tilt it and lay away. Beautiful. Right, let's get some rice, yes? You've seen this in stations before, haven't we? Why is your face like that, Dara? <laughs> We're gonna elevate it. That's the secret of any great chef. Elevation, right? So get that pan really nice and hot. Get your shallots in. Chopped shallots, a lot of garlic, okay? This fish needs flavor. In with my rice. It should be popping, because it's going crispy. That's what you want. All I'm gonna do now is just literally smother that with my fresh spinach. That's gonna wilt. Now, when you're cooking fish like that, you can only turn it once. Otherwise, it what? Falls apart. Falls apart. I'm going to very carefully and turn that over. Beautiful colour. Beautiful. Beautiful. Two more Beautiful. minutes on that side. So I want to start building that sauce there now. So let's get a, a beautiful pickle. Pickles. And I'm going to use that juice as well. Interesting. Now, chop up that beautiful dill pickle. The acidity and what it brings to fish is incredible. Big time. And all we're doing now 
like a little Vernoisette. Wow. Okay. Next, my capers. And finally, some flat leaf parsley. Rice, nice and crispy. Spinach has wilted. I'm familiar with the flavors of these foods. I've got three kids at home, so you know, a lot of these snacks I see in front of me are sitting in my cupboard. And sit that fish nice and gently on top. But there's a reason that these foods aren't in elevated cuisine. This is gonna be so much harder than it looks. Fresh lemon on top, that makes a massive difference. And there we are. That's how a master chef gets inspired by beautiful gas station ingredients. Wow. Excellent. Looks really good. Okay, guys, you will have 45 minutes to cook us a gourmet dish using gas station snacks as ingredients. You must use at least three of those ingredients in your final dishes. Whoever cooks the best dish tonight will get the coveted MasterChef immunity pin. Remember, sadly, whoever cooks the worst dish will be eliminated. Right, everybody ready? Yes, yes sir. Chef. 45 minutes. Start. Derek, please. Uh, now. Thank you. <laughs> Where's the chocolate bars? Hot Cheetos. All right, Michael. Wow. I don't have time to play. Where's the beer? I'm a little bit nervous because snacks are not gourmet dishes. This is truly on my element. My whole goal was to come in this competition and not make a terrible dish that will put me down in the bottom three. Hopefully, I can pull this off. Ooh. 41. This is heavy. Today, I grabbed uh, potato chips, a pickle, spicy cheese puff. I'm making a spicy chip coated cod. I'm definitely a snack girl. Snacks are my weakness, especially the spicy cheese puffs, which is why I picked those today. They're one of my favorite guilty pleasures, and I'm excited to use them in an elevated dish today. So I'm using actually more than three ingredients. I'm making a pan-seared crusted chicken breast. We've got a few different varieties of chips some almonds. And then I'm also using a little bit of the soda in my buttermilk soak for my chicken. So that's actually gonna add a little flavor, a little bit of sweetness. I was the first one to go home last time I was in the top 10. And that is not what I wanna see happen today. Let's cook, baby. Uh, double A sword again tonight. Uh, there is an immunity pin up for grabs. Sadly, someone will be leaving the competition. And um, this is not an easy one. It's going to be a real test on whether they can think outside the box and reimagine these ingredients. Tonight, we cannot afford to play it simple. Not at all. You have to separate yourself from the pack, do something magical, do something that's ostentatious, that's going to grab the attention of us. Perfect. Here we go. I am making a corn crusted snapper with a tricolor potato and gummy bear beer sauce. I basically took the gummy bears and I melt them down and then I added my beer, I added some shallots. I love snacks. I eat a lot of chips and my son loves chips too. So me and my son on a Friday night on the couch, yeah, we snacked out. I've never made gummy bear beer sauce, but hopefully what I'm deciding to do works. Eight minutes gone, 37 minutes remaining. Sugar, 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 sugar. Where's the sugar? Okay, I'm good. I'm going to be making ranch tortilla chips and corn chip crusted snapper with a lemon-lime herb sauce. Uh, this is my mom's recipe, so this thing ain't about to be bussin'. Like, if one thing, they're gonna say them flavors are there. My mom used to love to cook, so anytime you see me making fried fish, it's coming from her. I guess you would say that I'm putting my heart on a plate today. Unfortunately, I lost my mom when I was younger, and I'm just hoping that I could pull through this cook 
without getting emotional because I hate emotions. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit scared, but all I'm gonna do right now is incorporate all of these flavors and get this dish done and get everything on the plate. I just don't wanna go home tonight. Ten minutes gone, 35 minutes remaining. We're just gonna do the best that we can do. That's it. Okay. Michael, tell me about the dish. What are you doing? It's a risky one, but I'm gonna yeah. do a chocolate lava cake. In, in 34 minutes? Yeah. It's gonna be like a chocolate fondant liquid it center. Is. Yeah, that's the plan. Gotcha. Give yes. me the three uh, snacks. You're using and the then I'm pretzel? Doing, yeah, I'm doing a pretzel toffee. Wow. As well as a potato chip and peanut crumble. Why such a big risk on a night like tonight? Well, I, I want that immunity pin back. I'm not gonna stop. You're just gonna keep pushing. I've never been in the bottom. I don't plan to ever be in the bottom. Well, these fondants could take you down there if you don't get them in the frickin' oven. I know. Yeah, focus, please, yes. Edit yourself if necessary, right? Will do. Good luck. Let's get it! Yes! Perfect. Willie. Willie, Willie. Hey, how y'all doing? All right, what are you making? I'm gonna do an elevated chicken pot pie, and I'm gonna use uh, sunflower seeds and some hot cheese puffs and put it on my crust for my pot pie. Do you feel that a pot pie is elegant enough? I think so. Pot pie is hearty, and who don't like beer? You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna add this heavy cream in there and let it reduce and get it together. Well, hopefully it's not too rich. Listen, Willie, you're one of the two who hasn't won an immunity pen. You and Brandy. Right. I'm ready to take it. This is the top 10, and this is so important for me. Last week, I was in the bottom, and I'm here to prove that I deserve that pen and I'm going for it. Thank you, Willie. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, let me get this cake in the oven. This looks good. Right, young man. What's up, Sean? Tell me about what's the dish. What I you am doing? making a corn chip crusted snapper with a gummy bear beer sauce. A gummy bear sauce? Gummy bear beer sweet sauce, Sean. <laughs> Come on, man. You gotta go beer, you gotta go home. So what have you done? You've melted the gummy bears down? I melted the gummy bears down, sauteed some shallots, poured the beer in there, then I threw some garlic in there. Where'd you come up with a gummy bear sauce? I enjoy eating gummy bears, so when I stop at the gas station, like, that's like the first thing I grab. You're super competitive. Yes, You're giving me the perfect rundown yes, of the finale. There's only three, so you... Right. Uh-huh, and Derek and Willie. And Big Willie. And then give me first, second, third. I'm first, of course. I ain't gonna be second again. He can't be a double runner-up. <laughs> it ain't happening, bro. You don't want that smoke. There you go. <laughs> Get that fish nice and crispy. Don't overcook it. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. 15 minutes gone, 30 minutes remaining. God, 30 minutes. Come on, Mike. Don't leave it too late. Get them in the oven. Let's go. All right, how hard is it to incorporate these gas station snacks into a gourmet dish? Yeah, it's very difficult, so you've got to be really smart. The good option for me would be to go down that fish or meat route, but trying to incorporate those snacks into a dessert, 45 minutes, you're up against it. Yeah. Michael, listen to this. He's doing a lot of liquid chocolate cake. Oh, uh, wow. When you declare it liquid, it has to be liquid. Yeah. Oh. It's the biggest risk he's taken so far in this competition. Oh. If he can actually pull it off, I'd be really impressed. The shock of the night is Christian's dish. He's doing a beautiful corn custard snapper, and it's like a sweet and sour gummy bear sauce. No. And so, yeah, honestly. Wow. If he's able to nail a balanced sauce using gummy bears, showstopper. Yep, absolutely. Willie's doing a chicken pot pie. Ready? Wow. How are you elevating that? A pot pie is very rudimentary, yes. pretty standard, but he says it's gonna be loaded with flavor, so we'll see about that. Nearly halfway, guys. 25 minutes remaining. I'm worried about Michael. Oh, shoot. Oh, my God. Come on, Michael, get them in the oven, please. We are halfway through, and this is not going well. I'm getting in my own way. I'm getting nervous. Is it dumb to do a dessert in 45 minutes? Probably. I think I just completely screwed up. This is a show. Yeah, he's behind, he's behind. Oh, my God.
For this challenge, I'm making a chocolate lava cake. Is it dumb to do a dessert in 45 minutes? Probably, but I can't change it now. Are your cakes in, Michael? Yes, they are. Nice. Just under 20 minutes remaining. Come on, guys. That needs a little less sweetness. It smells amazing. All right, Bowen, what three snack ingredients did you use? So I grabbed onion puff and then potato chips and also cola. Because I'm doing a Japanese style katsu corn down blue with cola, soy sauce glaze, and the old sweet potato fries on top. A cola glaze. I wow. like that, but you have a lot of sweet and salty ingredients. What do you think is the one thing you should put in there? Something spicy. Yes, something spicy. Like, okay. To break it up, right? Yes. All right. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Right, Emily, Chef, what are you doing? So I'm doing a uh, seared chicken breast that's gonna be crusted after I sear it with potato chips and pretzels and Good. stuff. How are you sticking that crust? I'm gonna egg wash it and then I'm gonna crust it and broil it so it gets nice and brown. Immunity, what would it mean tonight? It would mean everything because it would give me the bump that I need to finish strong and get into the top five and then obviously finale. This sounds amazing, good luck. Thank you. Here we go. Ooh. Hey, guys. All right, Miss Brandy, what are the gas station items that you chose? Spicy hot cheese puffs, fruity cereal, lemon lime soda, and cola. Wow. I am going Venezuelan tonight. I am making a spicy hot corn chip arepa. I'm going to stuff it with some a chorizo and seasoned skirt steak. OK, what are you going to pair with I'm that? I'm doing a passion fruit lemon lime soda slaw. And then I'm doing a fruity cereal and lime zest crema. What? It sounds disgusting. a little bit out there. Um, I think it's all going to tie together. So have you ever been to Venezuela? I have not, but you know, I make these all the time. My kids love them. We always have to have bags of these spicy hot cheese puffs in the cabinet. You have a lot of stuff going on here, Brandy. Good luck. Thank you. Just over 15 minutes remaining. OK, this is ready. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Right, uh, young lady. Hello, chef. The three ingredients, what have you got? I have popcorn, corn chips, and chocolate. So I'm making a corn chiffon cake. There's gonna be a spiced chocolate buttercream in that, and it will garnish with caramel corn and brulee bananas. Wow, that sounds delicious. You are pushing it to get a dessert done in 45 minutes. You know, I think I'll be able to pull it off. What would it mean, Master Chef? Champion. Uh, it would mean everything. I've worked really hard over the past eight years, and I'm no longer a kid, and I think I'm proving that. This sounds amazing. Elevate it when you plate that, yes? Good luck. Thank you. Wow, this is exciting. I mean, no one's playing it safe. And I think what they're starting to do now is study each other's dish because they are raising the game. Beautiful. Aren't those pretty? Brandy is making arepas, one of the beloved dishes from Venezuela. Brandy's also doing a fruit cereal crema. What? Yeah, that sounds, sounds a little bit out there. No, that's, that <laughs> sounds terrible. Right there, that sounds dreadful. Come on. Bowen is going the route of a stuffed pork cutlet. He's going to go sort of katsu style with it. Crispy pork chop with a cola soy sauce reduction. See, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It makes sense. It makes a lot of sense, actually. But I told him, check the sweetness in that sauce. So we'll see how that pans out. Derek, I'm exciting dishes out there. Who's looking like they're in jeopardy? I've never been so worried for Michael. He's got an ambitious dish, putting it all on the line. It's part of the game. We're down to the last 10 minutes. Come on. Five, six. Oh, my God. Come on. Sweet potatoes. Whoa, 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 why is my oven off? Oh, my God. My cakes are supposed to be done, and all I see is chocolate soup. Now I look up, and my oven is off. I must have rubbed my oven. I guess I just grabbed the wrong handle and accidentally turned off the oven. I have nine minutes left, and I have unbaked lava cakes. I'm screwed. Off. Oh my god. My cakes are supposed to be done, and all I see is chocolate soup. 
Now I don't have lava cake. It's, it's on no one but me. I just need that thing to cook. I got it all the way up on 500. My only option right now is to crank the heat to 500, keep them in the oven as long as possible, and hope I can at least get this cake cooked. We're down to the last five minutes. Come on, guys. We got this, we got this. Oh, Brandy. Come on, come on, baby. Oh, gosh, down to the wire. Oh, you got this. 60 seconds to go, come on. Shanika, you've yes, got chef. to start plating now. Ah. Okay, careful now, Michael. You're not tipping them out, right? I'm not. It's too risky. Oh, my God. Shaking. Ten, Ten nine, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, two one. one. Hands in the air. Well done. <laughs> <sighs> I'm feeling good. I got everything on the plate. I'm hoping they appreciate the flavor of the snapper because it was inspired by my mom. It takes me back to when I was 12 years old watching her in the kitchen cook. So the flavors mean a lot to me. This is just like a complete unknown right now. I think my flavors are there. There's a good mix of sweet and salty. I hope this is enough to keep me in this kitchen today. Well done. Tough challenge tonight. You had to take the everyday snacks that you find through a gas station and use them to elevate gourmet dishes. Now, we're going to take a much closer look at all your dishes. Brandy, and what's in the crema? This is a fruity cereal lime zest crema. Interesting array of colors, huh, gentlemen? Yeah, what's, the, what's the base in there? What you put in there? Lemon, lime, herb, sauce, to give it a little bit more sweetness. Hard to do. This challenge is all about incorporating gas station snacks into a gourmet dish. This is not the time to play it safe. This is the top 10. You have to be willing to take a little bit more risk. Emily, you copied me and used potato chips in your crust? Yes. OK. Mm -hmm. Smart. I know they're looking for something unique and something dope and something that's very elevated. Gummy bear sauce. Have you ever eaten gummy bear sauce before on savory food? No. That is so hard to do to make that. Thank you, chef. The judges are some serious pit bulls when it comes to tasting food. OK, Willie, chicken pot pie. What's the flavor we're going to taste in that? So you're going to have a little curry, a little smoked paprika, and I've used beer. Interesting. Bowen, Bowen. Hi. Interesting presentation. And then also listen to your advice. You put some chipotle powder in this sauce. There's cola in here? A cherry cola. Cherry cola. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Wow. So you use chocolate bars and popcorn to make the dessert, right? Uh, yes, it's a, it's a chiffon cake. Salty too, huh? Yeah, but all together, they're meant to be balanced. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is the first time I haven't been proud of the food that I serve these judges. So we have a technical issue. You didn't turn them out, right? Correct. So it's not going to be molten? No. OK. I hope the flavors are still there, chefs. So do I. There are three cooks that put things into top gear tonight. The first dish that we want to taste, please make your way down here. Bowen. I've been caught up for the top three again, so that's my third time. I'm really proud of my dish. I think I've elevated the snacks really well. I always want to show something new, so I think I really did that today. Right, tell us what snacks you used, and tell us about the dish, please. The snack I used tonight is the onion puff, potato chips, and then cherry cola. The dish is Japanese-inspired katsu corn dung blue, stuffed with mozzarella cheese, served with sweet potato fries, and then cherry cola glaze. So visually, it looks good. It's like something out of a gastro pub. Shall we? Yeah. Mm, yeah.
Bowen, the dish is good. The actual fat from the mozzarella has made it really nice and delicious, but the sauce is really sweet. Okay, so I think this could have been sort of rounded with a bit of chili, a bit of heat in there. But you've elevated the gas station snacks. I think that's the highlight tonight. The slaw is acidic, it's crunchy, it's not overdressed. Yeah, Bowen, crusting that pork chop with potato chips, brilliant. Quite frankly, delicious. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty good. Yeah. Huh? Pretty good indeed. Comforty. Absolutely right. The second dish that we are very excited to dig into. Please come forward. Christian. Okay, Christian, can you please describe your dish? I chose corn chips, gummy bears, and beer. My dish is a crusted corn chip snapper over a bed of herb tricolor roasted potatoes with my gummy bear beer chili sauce. Wow. All right, Christian, visually it looks beautiful. The crust on that snapper is exceptional. Thank you. Here's the sort of crazy idea of these gummy bears. If this pays off, it could be an absolute showstopper. First time ever tasted a gummy bear sauce. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, it's delicious. Uh, I couldn't be happier. It's very weirdly, deliciously good. What about Skittles risotto? <laughs> you never know, Joe, that can possibly happen. But seriously, the fish is crispy, perfectly fried, no small feet. Christian, the gummy bears, they kind of let their sweetness go. The beer is definitely there. It makes you want to go back for another bite. It keeps your palate engaged. Thank you, Chef. Thank Great you. job. Well done. Thank oh, you. my <laughs> Edgy, dangerous, and good. The final dish in the top three featured some of the most interesting and harmonious flavors of the evening. Please come forward. Final dish in the top three. Please come forward. Shanika. Having the inspiration of my mom tonight, I think it's gonna allow me to show the judges how passionate I am about cooking. And <laughs> I really hope that they see I really really, really want this immunity pen. Okay, Shanika, what did you make us and incorporate into your dish? Corn chips, ranch tortilla chips, and I used the lemon lime soda. I made a ranch tortilla encrusted snapper with avocado puree that was infused with the lemon lime soda with a lemon lime herb sauce. Well, visually, uh, it looks super summery, light, flavorful. I feel like you were really cooking with your heart tonight. This is a food memory for me. I don't cook it often because I don't like to feel like this. Um, my mom used to cook cornmeal crusted red snapper every single Sunday, but every time that I taste those flavors, I just see her in the kitchen cooking, the music playing. It's like it was yesterday, and I don't like this. You know, Shanika, my father never even got to taste my food, ever. We can't live with regret, can we? So we take that level of hurt and we transform it into something that's really important. Be proud of that, okay? Yes, yeah, Chef. Shall we? Shanika. It's delicious. If it takes that kind of a journey to create this kind of food, then I think it's worth taking. Yeah, for me, I think the genius in this dish is that you use the lemon lime soda with the avocado mousse, and it's just a refreshing element that you can go to as a little relief from that fried richness of the fish. Chanaka, the fish is cooked beautifully. The big surprise for me tonight is that the freshness of that beautiful vinaigrette, and 99% of the customers in any restaurant tonight would never understand that was made from a soda. I think it's one of the best issues that you've cooked. Good job. Thank you. 
We need a moment, please. Excuse us. This is tough. So Bo is this. Uh, He's oh. just like, it's on another level than his yeah. stuff, and it's really good. Uh, Christian Snapper. Really good. Biggest risk of the night. Let's talk about the freshness of the shanna, because uh, that thing was on a different level. It's yeah. a tough one. And it had so much going on, spice, sweetness, acidity. Mm. I can't separate them. We're splitting hairs. Good job. You good job, too. You did a lot. Good job, dude. Shall we? Congratulations, you're all safe from elimination. But as far as immunity and the pin, we talked it over and decided that immunity goes to... Christian. This is an amazing moment right now. This is my second immunity pin, and I've never been in the bottom three. And I feel like the competitors need to watch out, because honestly, this high that I'm on, I plan on staying there. Congratulations, young man. But that's not all. There was another dish just as good as Christian's. So we have another immunity pin to give out. The second person with immunity next week is... Shanika. Congratulations. Thank you, Chef. Exceptional. That was special, Shanika. More of that. Oh, you won't be well trying done. to make me cry. Right, we did that already. Christian, Shanika, Bowen, head up to Good the job. safety of the balcony. Congratulations. My dish got me immunity, and it means a lot. And for them to say it's one of the best dishes of the night, that it means even more. My mom will be proud right now. Well done. Tonight, we also came across um, three dishes that we felt were a bit of a wreck. Sadly, one of those cooks will be leaving the competition tonight. The first dish we want to taste. He used the gas station snack as almost an afterthought. Please, step forward. Willie. Oh, <laughs> ah, ow! I can't believe that I've been in the bottom two weeks in a row. There's just got to be a disconnect with me and these judges. Right, describe the dish, please. I had beer, sunflower seeds, and spicy cheese puffs. And I made a beer-infused chicken pot pie with a spicy cheese puff and sunflower seed crumble. Visually, as with any pot pie, it's difficult to tell. I mean, here I can see one is collapsed. Not sure, I have to taste. Shall we? Willie, um, here's the thing. The gas station snacks aren't highlighting. They're sort of a throwaway seasoning on this. But also, it actually tastes like a chicken sauce as opposed to a pot pie. Aside from that, it's just too greasy. There's just too much heavy cream. It's very, very, very rich to the point that it's difficult to eat. Mm. Look, the usage of the gas station ingredients could have been realized a lot different. You just reduced beer and then crumbled up some of the puffs on top. Yes, Chef. Thank you. So rich. Yeah. Okay, the next dish we have to taste had a strange mix of flavors. Please come forward. Brandy. You know, it's crazy because on season seven, I did great, you know, I made it to the finale, but the curveballs are definitely bigger this season than I anticipated. I didn't want to be in the bottom once, let alone twice. Okay, Brandy, please tell us what you made. My ingredients were spicy cheese puffs, lemon lime soda, fruity cereal, and cola. So I made a spicy cheese puff arepa with a cola skirt steak and a fruity cereal crema. Looking at an arepa, it looks bizarre with its color, and it just doesn't show me a lot of elevation. Is the cereal still in the sauce? I strained it out after just a couple minutes. Yeah, the arepa looks and tastes like an orange hockey puck. The worst part of it is that I cannot even identify one of the gas station ingredients. Brandy, unfortunately, it does not taste good, young lady. You don't eat food that color. It just looks very strange. The interior is incredibly dry. There's no salt in that dough. But the hero tonight 
should have been those snacks. And they just fell flat. Yeah, Brandy, you would never steep creme fraiche in cereal and expect that to impart flavor. That just doesn't work like that. Thank you, Brandy. It's very strange. The final dish is from someone whose overconfidence led them to make some huge missteps tonight. Please bring your dish forward, Michael. It really hurts to be on the bottom. I really wanted to show myself that I could continue to be at the top of this competition, but I dropped the ball today. Michael, can you please describe your dish? Today I used chocolate bars, potato chips, peanuts, and pretzels. My dish tonight is a chocolate bar fondant with a peanut and potato chip crumble, a vanilla mascarpone cream, and pretzel toffee. Young man, you know, it looks terrible. The dish actually sounds quite sort of unique, but I'm not even the finest pastry chef in America tonight would attempt to do that in 45 minutes. So the idea, of course, is the soft chocolate center. So it'll come out. That's not coming out. The idea, of course, is, is this. But they're not even gonna come out. It's not coming out. Huh? We're gonna eat it like pudding. So we wouldn't serve that in the restaurant, right? Never. So I'm sad for you, and I'm shocked personally. <sighs> right, let's deal with the elephant in the room, shall we? The fondant is gross. It doesn't have a soft chocolate center. The actual sugar on the outside is crystallized. It's that dry. That is a mess. But you've elevated the actual gas station snacks quite well. The peanut butter brittle um, and that crumble. And salt, spicy, sweet, uh, really good. I just wish you hadn't attempted something that you couldn't have pulled off. I appreciate that you took a risk. Just make sure you can freaking execute it. Baking is a science, and there's a reason that it comes down to a gram. I agree with Chef Gordon. All the accoutrements are delicious. Right, your garnish tastes like the best gas station candy bar I've ever had. Your fondant tastes like chocolate scrambled eggs. Oh. You took a big risk today, and you failed. Thank you. Willie, Brandy, and Michael, please give us a moment. This is really hard. Man, Big Willie's was just way too rich. Brandy's was just a big misconception. No it was a disaster. Uh, Michael fell flat tonight. One big technical error brought down what could have been a very good dish. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Willie, Brandy, and Michael, unfortunately, one of you guys have cooked in the MasterChef kitchen for the very last time. This pains me. Michael. Young man, your saving grace tonight is that you had a good usage of those snacks. Head back to your station. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Willie, Brandy, um, both of you didn't highlight sufficiently the gas station product, but we did agree that one of you did miss the mark more than the other. The person leaving the MasterChef back to win season. That person is... Brandy. Big Willie, say goodbye to Brandy. Head back to your station, please. Brandy, unfortunately tonight, your dish concept just didn't make sense. And those gas station snacks were not highlighted enough to showcase your talent. But we're going to miss you. The voice, the passion, and the determination. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad I came. I'm glad I did this. I'm glad I pushed myself. Come and say goodbye. Come on. 
definitely not how I wanted to leave season 12 of MasterChef. Great job, Randy. But it was an honor to be asked back. Randy! In season seven. It means so much to me. It means everything to me. You know, I was so close last time. The apron goes to Brandy. So I'm proud of myself for pushing myself. I've gotten stronger by being here. I've made it in the top three. I've been on a winning team. I cooked a beef Wellington for Gordon Ramsay. Ooh, good job. That is it. MasterChef has molded and shaped my life in many ways over the years. And this time has lit a fire under me. It's got my motivation back in the kitchen. I'm going to hit the floor with my feet running when I get home. That needs salt. That needs salt, 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 salt. I came back here to prove that I belong in the culinary world. Profoundly flavored. Can you see that up there? Spot on. I had no doubts with brandy and salmon. Thank you, Sean. This tastes like a risotto I would eat at my mother's house. You made it work, young lady. Thank you. <laughs> Competition this season is fierce, but proud of myself for making it to the top 10. You know, it doesn't matter if you're from a big city or a small town, you know, you can still reach for your dreams. Next time, top nine. No. Another winner's mixed you box reveals a familiar face. Yeah, and he's spicing things up. Oh. Wow. Emily, your favorite. This is my worst nightmare. <laughs> but if they can't stand the heat. When we have too much spice, we don't want yeah. that. I'm not going to make that mistake. Go and don't use that caviar. Where did the last minute go? They'll have to say goodbye to the MasterChef kitchen. It's a little bit bizarre. It's hard, like a hockey puck. You missed the mark. You're a much better cook than that dish was. I hate this part. One potato, two potato.